further notice, Civic Center Revitalization Committee meetings will be conducted pursuant to the provisions of California Government Code, Section 54953E, added by Assembly Bill 361, which allows the city to use teleconferencing and to provide the public an opportunity to address the committee via call-in option or an internet-based service option during a proclaimed state of emergency. <clears throat> During the state of emergency related to the COVID-19 pandemic and in the interest of public health and safety, the committee members will be participating in the committee meeting via a virtual teleconference platform. Additionally, the committee is providing a virtual participation option for members of the public. I will go over the specifics of how to join the webinar and will give details on how the public can offer their public testimony. Today's, subcommittee meeting, today's committee meeting will be held virtually using the Zoom webinar platform. Members of the public can join the meeting by computer, tablet, or smartphone by accessing the link, which is listed on the meeting notice and agenda on the committee webpage. To join the Zoom webinar by telephone, please dial 1-669-254-5252. When prompted, input webinar ID 161-340-8303. This information is also available on the agenda. When the chair introduces the item you would like to comment on, you will raise your hand by either tapping the raise your hand button on your computer, tablet, or smartphone, or by pressing star nine on your phone. You will be taken in the order in which you raise your hand. You may only speak once on a particular item. When I indicate it is your turn to speak, I will call you by your name as it appears on the Zoom webinar attendee list, or I will read out the last four digits of your phone number, if you have called into the meeting. That is how you will know it is your turn to speak. If you have joined the webinar by computer, tablet, or smartphone, you will receive a pop-up notice to select to unmute your device. If you have called into the meeting by cell phone or landline, press star six on your phone to unmute yourself. I will review these instructions briefly again when the public comment period on an item is open. Please wait until the item you wish to speak to has been called before raising your hand to speak. If you raise your hand during a non-comment period, your hand will be lowered. When you are announced as the next speaker, please unmute yourself and offer your comments. Also, please mute the volume on your TV or computer before you begin to speak. Chair. Thank you. I'll call the meeting now to order um, of December 12th, and I will call the roll. And so when I call your name, please unmute yourself and say present. Lori Black. Uh, Jamie Bradford is obviously here. Sorry, Chris, is she coming on? Yeah, she's, she's just got promoted. Bridget Brashear. Betsy Brennan, I know is also waiting to get in. Um, Mark Cafferty, I know is on his mobile, so he might not be able to respond. Julie Coker. Carrie's here for Julie. Thanks, Carrie. Julie Corrales. Here. Steve Cushman. Here. Denise Garcia. Here. Martha Gilmer. Here. Alan Jin. Joel Hermosillo. Here. Donna Jones. Here. Jennifer Luce. Here. Jack McGrory. Here. Mark Nelson. Present. Bill Ponder. Here. Stephen Russell. Dr. Ricky Shabazz. Here. Tony Young. And Mike Zuchett. Here. And Lori and Betsy, we did acknowledge that you are here. Uh, thank you for your attendance. Um, it has been noted and a quorum is present. Each committee member is attending virtually. Uh, we'll now go to the chair's report and I just kind of wanted to go over a bit of a roadmap today. Um, you'll notice on the agenda that we've added a couple dates in January. Um, today we'll hear from each of our subcommittee and working groups and um, vote on what they're presenting so that we know at least conceptually we are all kind of rowing in the same direction. Um, the staff report that you see today is really a comp compilation of what um, everyone's recommending, and that's not what's going to go to the city council from us. Um, so that what we think we'll do is come back, if you approve these dates, come back on the 9th with kind of a more cohesive draft product 
for our consideration. That includes today's input. And then um, the city council is taking this up again on the 10th for an update. And so we can get their feedback and hopefully a final product will come back to us um, for our consideration on the 23rd. So um, if there's questions or a discussion on this, we can talk about it. We're gonna move right into the discussion items. Did I miss anything, Chris or Jay, that you wanted to add, or do you have an additional staff report? When, yeah, so when we when we discuss um, the staff report, I'll pull it up on, on my screen. Um, we're also working on a more thorough report as well, which will be um, also, yeah, we'll be working we'll on that as well. Jay? No, I, I think, uh, Jamie, you covered it well. Just a reminder that we will be going on the 10th, and the 10th is not for council action. It is only to provide council with more input and their opportunity to provide input back to staff and, and to the committee. Great, thank you. And we are, um, I, so non agenda is next on the, on the agenda, but I'm actually gonna uh, trail that to the end when we normally take it and move right into the, the uh, action agenda, which is item one is the Civic Center Revitalization Committee Working Group and Stakeholder Roundtable Recommendations. The public comment period for this item is now open. Please raise your hand if you wish to speak. The queue will close when the last virtual speaker finishes speaking or five minutes after the queue has opened, whichever happens first. To raise your hand to speak, select the raise your hand button or press star nine. Do we have any speakers in the queue, Chris? We sure do. Um, we'll start with Bridget Browning. Bridget? Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Bridget Browning. I'm the secretary treasurer of the San Diego and Imperial County's Labor Council. And we're really excited about this development project, but we just wanted you to be mindful of a few things. Um, one, the current Civic Center is a very important employment center for a variety of our unions. And so it's really important to us that the theater whether you wanna build a new one or not, still is a component of the future project because we wanna preserve those good union jobs. Um, we also wanna make sure that there are agreements for construction of operations and operations for any ancillary developments that might be considered um, up to and including if you're gonna recommend a hotel be part of the RFP project. Uh, we really wanna make sure that there's gonna be good, um, good middle-class jobs created by this amazing development. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Bridget. Chuck Kaminsky. Chuck. Yes, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, I've read through all the work group reports. I, re I appreciate all the effort. One thing that I found uh, missing, however, and perhaps it will be in the next iteration, is any discussion of the entire uh, development being uh, climate positive or carbon negative, where uh, the, uh, the uh, development actually uh, uh, controls more carbon than, than it self admits and actually is a benefit. And I think given uh, the climate action plan and the other initiatives of the city, I think that's an important aspect that has to be uh, taken into account. Um, also, I'm hoping that the big bold vision picture that uh, Jennifer Luce talked about early on as part of her work group is really contained in the in the final iteration. Right now I see a lot of um, uh, interesting and, and salient points, but I don't get a big picture yet. So I'm hoping it, as the committee meets after the council meeting uh, and also in their final meeting, which may be the final meeting in January, that there is a, a big bold vision that is part of the charge of the committee. Thank you. Yeah. Gretchen Newsom. Gretchen. Thanks, Chris. Gretchen Newsom on behalf of IBW 569 and our 3600 Union Electricians and Power Professionals. Here to thank the committee on your good work to pursue a revitalization of Civic Center. And as you continue to develop your strategies to redevelop the entire site, we hope it will also include a new city hall, one that San Diego can be proud of as a gem of democracy, but also adopt the big picture vision that the site could be a transit hub or possibly a union station with mixed use of critically needed workforce housing and office space and retail. And most importantly to IBW 569, 
and also to our Building Trades brothers and sisters is that the Civic Center be redeveloped under a project labor agreement that creates local jobs and quality construction careers with apprenticeship opportunities for local San Diegans. The PLA with all the community benefits and economic benefits of investing funds back into the local workforce should be expected and required under a public, private, or public-private partnership for this redevelopment. Our members are looking forward to building a new civic center, proudly pointing out their work to their children and their children's children. Thank you for your service and we look forward to partnering with you on this very important project. Thank you, Gretchen. Amanda? Oh, I put her left hand. Uh, Hello, uh, Chris, am I on? Yeah, we're, we're going to go with Fernanda first. Oh, Fernanda first. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Fernanda. Okay. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is Fernanda Flores. I am the political director for the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees, Local 122. We proudly represent 1,500 stagehands. We specialize in providing well-trained, professional, and reliable crews for everything involved with production in Southern California since 1905. As you know, our experienced members do all the stagehand work at the Civic Theater. This work accounts for hundreds of good union jobs on an annual basis who ensure every production is executed perfectly for the thousands of San Diegans who come see shows throughout the year. The Civic Theater not only contributes to San Diego's performing arts environment, but also is a significant economic driver for our local economy. To that end, it is imperative the redevelopment includes a theater that will ensure that San Diegans continue to have the opportunity to experience Broadway level shows and concerts as well as on that um, will preserve will as well on that we will preserve the existing good union jobs for stations and our siblings at Unite Here Local 30 and SEIU. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. Karen. Thank you. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is Carol Kim, and I'm the business manager of the San Diego County Building and Construction Trades Council, representing over 30,000 union construction workers in the county of San Diego. Thank you for investing time and thought into this proposed revitalization of the Civic Center. This is a much needed and long awaited effort that can be a catalyst for the transformation of our city's downtown. If done right and well, it can act as a vibrant hub of the downtown community with the new city hall and city offices, transit, workforce and affordable housing, performing arts space and opportunities for small businesses. However, as we move forward, we should also leverage this opportunity to uplift our local skilled and trained construction workforce by redeveloping this public's asset under a project labor agreement, while creating new opportunities for members of our communities who wish to gain a career in the union construction trades via our top of class apprenticeship programs. The benefits of building the new Civic Center this way will compound the good that such a project will bring to San Diego, its residents, and its taxpayers. And I encourage this committee, as well as the city council, to take these opportunities into consideration. Many thanks and good luck in your uh, proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Don. Yes, this is Don Wood. Uh, <clears throat> I have a long memory. <clears throat> I've lived here since 1947. I remember when Pete Wilson tried to build a new city hall. I remember when Roger Hedgecock tried to build a new city hall. I can remember when a half a dozen other mayors tried to build a new city hall. All of them crashed. All of them uh, were shipwrecked on the rocks of San Diego city hall politics. And so I suggest as part of your effort, and part of your history uh, uh, study of this project, look at the previous efforts to build a city hall, a new city hall, find out why they died and see if you can design the new proposal in such a way as to uh, improve its chances of actually getting built. Thanks. Are there any other public comment on this? <clears throat> that concludes public comment. Great, and I think I need to turn it back to you to let us know how you'd like to proceed. Yes, so before we begin working um, 
before we begin with the working group and uh, roundtable recommendations, I want to explain the process that we'll be uh, using for the for, for the recommendations. Um, so when, when the chair calls on the working group or the roundtable, I will open up the public comment period. The working group or roundtable chair will share the recommendations, and then we will continue with public comment, followed by committee member comment for each of the four working groups and roundtables. Um, so once we have concluded committee member comment, we will register a vote. Um, so Chair Bradford will call on each of you um, to register your vote. And we will repeat the process for each working group and roundtable just to ensure that uh, members of the public and committee members um, have the opportunity to speak on each uh, um, sub item. And um, I'll, I'll make sure to also be sharing my screen so that we can follow along with the recommendations as well. Um, so with that, Chair, I'll turn it back to you and we can begin with uh, the roundtable and working group chairs. Great. Um, I'll start with Betsy. Great. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, share with you today. Let me just get up my notes. I am prepared. Just want <laughs> get to the right, get to the right part of my notes here. Everyone can see my screen with the staff report. Yes. 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 Sorry. I got too organized. It's in front of us, Betsy. I, okay. I see it here. All right. So we, we took, um, we took a lot of time. It's, it's a short presentation. But uh, it took um, it took our committee quite a bit of uh, time and attention to get to where we are, and we want to prioritize the feasibility by focusing the scope on the six civic center blocks and maximizing the revenue. Um, Joel, can you unmute for a second? Yes. Is is this? I want to make sure this is the version that I'm supposed to be working from. Yeah, let me, let me. Because I, I, I have two versions. Yeah, but the one on screen was not the, the latest. Okay. okay, I didn't think so. Let me just pull up. Sorry, we, we apologize. We sent in our updated version from our round table a little bit late. We sent it in on Friday. It will be updated. That was our fault. We needed to get it to Chris by Thursday and we didn't. We got it to him on Friday. So he will be updating it. But um I think we have the correct one on the screen now. Is is that right? That is correct. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So now we have the correct one up and I will read from that. So we wanted to we want this project to happen. It's really important that we have the heart of our city. Uh, yes, it's important to have a, a city hall, but really it's to have a place for the public to gather, to, to, to talk about all the things that Jennifer's group talked about and that she'll probably talk more about today. And to talk about the things that Steve's group talked about and that we also did endorse as a committee. Um, we talked a lot about Steve and Jack and Tony and Mike's uh, recommendations from their group. And we want to have um, a place that actually happens and that we can have residential and a, a quite a bit of density on the site and focus on the six civic center blocks and uh, go through the process as defined by HCD. We want to prioritize the city seat of government by maximizing the number of city workers in downtown and obviously understanding that there are city workers all over the city of San Diego, but um, to the extent possible and maximizing the density and site to allow for as, as many city workers as possible on that site and allowing the council chambers to be there um, and creating a really vibrant urban plaza and a robust vision for the public realm to encourage civic discourse and gathering and maximizing connectivity to downtown and the rest of San Diego via a world-class transit facility forming the epicenter for transit in our region. We also, of course, encourage vibrancy and activation through high quality urban design, 
and want the civic um, civic theater to remain there. Um, and we are agnostic that um, it's either a new civic theater or um, the remaining the 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 existing civic theater renovated. We didn't get into that much detail which one it is, as long as there is a civic theater on site. And um, we want to, people to work and live and play in this entertainment district and have retail and housing and community service uses. And we understand that the city will hopefully be putting out a site plan diagram for the six city blocks to give the development community some sort of at least guidelines for what they're looking for without hampering the creativity for the, the teams. So um, we wanted to keep it very focused and doable, but those are our recommendations from the Downtown San Diego Partnership. And our whole mission is economic vitality and cultural uh, vibrancy of Downtown San Diego. And I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone might have. I wanna thank our entire committee. They put a lot of work and care into this. And Joel Hermosillo, who is the City Center Business Improvement District Director, is here too. And Steve Cushman attended many of the meetings. Um, and if anyone wants to comment from our committee or people have questions, happy to answer them. Are there uh, questions or comments on this one or a motion? If we can do the, the public comment and then head to uh, gotcha. So is there again, public comment? Yeah, so again, to raise your hand to speak, select the raise your hand button or input star nine. When I let you know it's your turn to speak, unmute yourself by either selecting the unmute button or by inputting star six. Is there any public comment? Don, go ahead. Yeah, I want to. Uh... I want to thank this committee for their efforts, especially the uh, the slides there, the renderings and the photos they had of city halls in other capitals around the world. I wasn't clear why so many of them were brutalist architecture, uh, like the, well, I can't remember which ones, but there was some pretty terrible examples. Uh, if you could do some other ones that show uh, city capitals in other cities that were built in a more classic style, it would it would make my heart feel better and make sure we're not heading toward something that looks more like the downtown San Diego uh, County Jail than like a city hall. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further public comment? Seeing none, that concludes public comment. Chair? Sure. Okay, anyone have any um, committee comments or questions or a motion? Jack has a question. I think Jack and Donna both have questions. That's a good, great job on this. Um, I only have, I have one issue on the second bullet and we could bring 12,000 city employees downtown, okay? But that is not gonna answer, you know, the call for good customer service, good public service. And somehow in that bullet, I'd like to just see, the, you know, that there's a balance between good customer service and public service to the neighborhoods vis-a-vis -vis who should be downtown. Mm -hmm. And it looks to me like we're just focused strictly on downtown in that bullet. Uh, that caused me, a, I understand your position and I would, be advocating the same thing, but I think, you know, you've got to, we've got to really look at how best do we deliver customer service as a city government? No, but a point well taken. And we definitely understand the balance and customer service needs to be utmost. And I think this mayor, well, I'm not going to speak for this mayor, but um, I mean, customer service is absolutely important. So thank you, Jack. And they had one other issue and that is we keep on saying six blocks and this is, Jay's probably going to kill me for saying this, but you know when we the first parcel of property we built to build Petco Park, we bought for forty dollars a square foot in East Village. When we broke ground on the ballpark, the adjacent parcels were selling for five hundred dollars a square foot. 
If we do a really good job with these six blocks, we are increasing the property values dramatically in that quadrant of downtown. And my recommendation would be, I don't know how you would we do this in this process, but there are some properties that are on the, on the market now that are adjacent to these six blocks. And if we can strike a deal to get those properties at a good value, we ought to be incorporating those into this project because you, you're, we're going to forego an opportunity um, that is going to be way too expensive later. I remember I was with the city when they offered us the Civic Center Plaza building for $10 million. And everybody said it was too much money. And, I'm, and I look, we looked at each other and said, are you kidding me? <laughs> and it, it, we, we, we have opportunities now to expand this six block core to a bigger parcel that will, that will be way too expensive to build or to buy later on. And I don't know how we incorporate that into these discussions, but I'll leave that up to Jay and Jessica, how you, how you figure that out. I would suggest that um, some of these comments and please everyone push back on me, but maybe Betsy takes them back. And when we reconvene on the ninth, that we're gonna have another opportunity to, to consider this. Or if Betsy, you wanna accept or deny him now, that's fine too, I'm trying no, to- No, I appreciate it. Um, our committee will be meeting one more time uh, before the 18th anyway. So um, I'm happy to bring, we wanted to hear these comments and the comments from the city council. So um, I'm happy to have that conversation with my committee, my round table. It's not a committee, it's a round table, but yeah. Donna, did you have your hand up? Yes, um, I think I, I really liked the comments and all the work you've done, Betsy. Um, I appreciated Jack's comment about the adjacent properties um, increase in market value. And I feel like um, Betsy was also saying she, uh, I can't remember exactly what the point was, but maybe you don't want to expand the current project so much that it's even more overwhelming. So I don't know if if the idea is maybe purchase the adjacent properties as a phase two, we don't necessarily have to do it all as one big project at this time. It could be phased, I would think, but um, that maybe should be a discussion point. And then I, I like the idea, having served on one of the sports arena committees, it, it certainly is difficult, already challenging enough. And so the idea of having some guardrails um, for the people that want to try to propose development on the site, I think can be helpful. But I guess my question procedurally is, how, how is that going to happen? Are, are we in our committee going to decide um, that we think it should be 30% housing, you know, whatever the percentages should be as a guideline? Or is that something that we're just going to say have guidelines and have the city council come up with the guidelines or what's the thought about how we get actual numbers there? Jay, do you wanna weigh in? I, I mean, I think we're gonna make the suggestions we wanna make and the city council will end up doing what they ultimately wanna do along with HCD. Um, yes. Yeah, so you have additional. Yeah, just a couple of comments and, and maybe one you know, towards Jack's comment. No, I won't kill you, Jack. Um, I, you know, I, you know, obviously HCD's process is pretty prescriptive, and I've said that over and over again. Um, but this should serve clearly as as a guidelines, um, and maybe some guardrails or parameters going going forward. Um, I mean, it's good to hear what you would like absolutely included versus what might be nice to have. You know, some of it might be visionary, some of it may be absolute. I was going to maybe respond to, to Jack's comments in terms of acquiring some additional property. Um, maybe that comes from this committee. Maybe it's the Economic Development Subcommittee, you know, as part of their, you know, they've, they've got specifically as it relates to City Hall um, and this project, but then maybe throw that out on the 10th, we could have that discussion with the city council to see if there's any political appetite. Um, I, I'll have conversations with the mayor between now and then as well. Um, but let's see what the city council, because they're ultimately going to have to approve whether or not to move forward with trying to acquire 
and whether it's part of this overall project or or a separate project i hear what jack is saying if it's a separate project the price may go up on the property versus if we can get you know get something done sooner than later on it so i mean all these things i, th I think are still open for for discussion um and i think the 10th council meeting which is why we want to do this as an information only item is to get their reactions and i think staff's report to the council that day is going to be more you know focused than it was the first time here here's the direction we think we should be going um obviously the committee will have an opportunity to make a presentation on some of the things that may be beyond what staff is going to recommend and then get that feedback from the council and that that's going to tell us whether it's the their right decision or not and then again if it's contiguous property and if we do something you know across the street for an example from from where city hall is to me that's contiguous um and that could be all part of one noa process if we're acquiring it sooner than later if um Obviously, if any acquisition is going to slow down this process too long, I think the council is going to get impatient. So all these things are are, are good. The one other comment I would have for, for Betsy, just to consider, and because I'm trying to interpret some of your, your bullet points, if, if the committee decides to have an, an NOA on six blocks or five blocks instead of six blocks and do the six block as sort of a governmental purpose, I just want to make sure that the interpretation of your principles are broad enough you know, to be consistent with that. Okay, yeah, thanks so much, Jay. And we did spend time on at the committee meeting on that topic and we agreed with the Economic Development Committee's principles that they put forward. I think they were eight that uh, talked about five. So we'll bring that back to the committee and be clear uh, that that was that worked for us as well. And it is six blocks, but it might only right. be five through the NOA. So that's that's all I'm just trying to. Okay, thanks. I actually read it as being complimentary. Yeah. Um, but we'll be, and we'll then I can clear that up a little. And I think I'll improvise a little bit and just, we don't need to take action today. Maybe today's more of the feedback day. And <laughs> unless everyone feels super strong on one item, I, you know, so let's be a little flexible since we have future opportunities to to um, vote on a final product, if people are open to that. Lori? My question is directed um, both at staff and also at Jack. Um, at one point in time when they were looking at this like 15 years ago, there was consideration of these six blocks in conjunction with both the federal building and the state buildings over on front. Are those totally out of play at this point for any kind of potential consolidation or re building relationship as it goes with this project or even that which Hassan talked about? Jay, I think we've actually touched on this. Yeah, I mean- Those are already in process. You, the state, talking, that, that, I didn't know that. So the state building. Yeah, the state building. You know, I, I know when the mayor was in the legislature, he had legislation passed uh, that would give sort of the city the right to first refusal. But the state decided to ignore it. And uh, the governor went through his own process. And those blocks are already under sort of a development or process of, of going through a development agreement uh, for workforce housing. Seems like Jay though, Lori makes a good point. We are, at some point in time when this gets approved by the council, we ought to see if we can catch up with them and at least do some kind of a coordinated plan. Sure, and we've been part of their process more as observers, but they've allowed us to participate at least with, with no sort of as an ex officio member. So, we're aware of what they were proposing. We'd even talked about possibly placing a city hall there. That's before we settled on the 101 Ash and CCP lawsuits and so forth. Um, but yes, we'll definitely, you know, keep in touch with them and try to coordinate. I have one last question on that. Did they go out and do any kind of community outreach, whether in downtown or in the city with regards to that particular 
property going out? Is there any process that the state has had except for the governor waving his magic wand and saying, I think we'll keep this, this is a good asset? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, they went through a process in terms of uh, a request for qualifications to get developer proposals in, but in terms of any community input, uh, not that I'm aware of. Thank you. Betsy, do you, did you get enough feedback yes, for your group? Yeah. Okay, great. And Thank okay, you very much. For the committee, I'm having a hard time on my screen seeing your hands raised. So if I don't call on you, just feel free to speak up. Joel also had his hand up earlier. I'm not sure if you saw his on the comments. I assume uh, I just that wanted was to, I just wanted available. To make I'm sorry about that. I just want to make a comment. I just want to echo Betsy's uh, words on thanking the members for our roundtable committee uh, for the discussions and hard work they, they did throughout these past uh, few months um, to get, put these goals to get, together. I also also thank uh, Betsy for her leadership on this through this committee too and guiding, being that guiding hand in everything with the downtown area. Um, not only will this, you know, this be bring a lot of great opportunities for the businesses, especially within the city center bid, but also throughout uh, all of downtown San Diego. Um, you know, it's all creating an access, uh, fully accessible down uh, city, city center, uh, fully accessible city hall for all of downtown um, through the arts, through the uh, activations that we'll bring into the business community as well. Um, you know, it's also gonna be, hopefully we plan to, you know, meet the needs for all the city employees for years to come. So I would like for the committee to keep that in mind now, because this project is not only supposed to meet the current needs, it's supposed to meet the future needs as well. And that's it. Great Thank point. You. Are we good to move to the next? Yes. Am I missing it? Okay, great. Um, let's go to uh, Carrie Capich with Tourism Authority. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie, and thank you, Chris, for all of your help and guidance. Um, so the the tourism group. We had 11 member businesses that provided input just in terms of more experiential insights and thoughts based on their experience as business operators, both downtown and then also having worked in other communities. So the, the discussions that we had, this included lodging properties. It also included restaurants, attractions, the arts, and tour operators. So we're asking for really information about what could we look at in terms of um, the experience for downtown and what was the art of the possible with the land that's available and kind of what that vision could be. So we, we don't have guidelines, we just had thoughts um, that we put into our, our memo that we sent to the committee. So the, the discussion centered around really the idea of having a mixed use space so making sure that we're servicing the needs of residents and workers first, and then visitors would be kind of the, the second piece of it. If we have an area that's vibrant with residents and workers, visitors will be attracted to it. And so that's how we get that work, live, play component built. There was a lot of discussion about making sure that it's um, a lot of programming is done, that there's green space, that their arts are well incorporated into the space and that there are amenities that are there. So whether it's shops, uh, restaurants, arts organizations, and others, really making sure that it's a very pleasing space. And there were discussions about other areas across the US and even internationally where people have done a really good job of going in and re-envisioning urban spaces. And I know Jennifer's talked about it and others on this call through the committee meetings. I think that that's kind of the vision that, that everybody has. Um, a lot of discussion about making sure the space is thought through holistically. So how the streets are handled um, was very important and transit did come up as well. In terms of architecture, uh, a lot of discussion about making sure that the architecture is um, basically aspirational, not to build ugly buildings, but really aspirational. Take a look at what reflects the San Diego brand and a lot of discussions about just the beauty of the Rady Shell and how stunning that is, or Petco Park and the use of the materials that are there, the downtown library. So how could the, the architecture of San Diego, which is becoming better and better known um, and renowned, how could that be woven into the space that's built? Also, too, making sure that we're really thinking of this area as the heart of downtown that is linking to 
other neighborhoods. And um, our group did ask for you know, more insights in terms of what was happening with Horton Plaza Park and the redevelopment at Horton Plaza and how all of that starts to work together in you know, a bigger picture. A lot of discussion about um, if it's possible to have something that's iconic, uh, that's something that the downtown area does not have. So we have Balboa Park, of course, and we have the Midway, uh, we have Torrey Pines, we now have the Radies Shell, but is there an element that can be brought in that creates kind of that iconic sense of place? And again, this group was very focused in on the experience and how people feel and what would draw them into the area. So of course they, they brought up things like, you know, Millennium Park or, or other places. A lot of discussion about the arts um, and really seeing that the civic theater, whether it's renovated or what might happen is really kind of a core element, but making sure that there's arts woven in that's from day to night. So it's not just focused in on evening activities. So whether it's the new arts district, new museums and galleries, public art that is accessible outside and is woven into the experience, making sure again, that there's the ability to draw people in and that it creates a great sense of place. Uh, a lot of discussion about not uh, repeating the mistakes of the past, like with Horton Plaza, which was built inward, but instead building outward. And we saw that with some of the design pieces that were shown at a previous meeting in terms of really making sure that the space is done in a way that invites people in and that uh, future workspace needs and service levels are balanced. So what are those future workspace needs? I think at the last meeting, there was discussion from Jay that there's maybe 2,700 employees that are currently working downtown, but there's 12,000 employees uh, for the city of San Diego and making sure that there's the alignment of the services to place and also departments with one another. And so that's not for us to figure out by any means, but just that idea of really taking a look at how many workers do need to be accommodated. And that needs to be kind of a core starting point in terms of what needs to be built. A lot of discussion because, again, you're talking business owners who are struggling with um, housing for employees, but the need for workforce housing. So not to build at the high end and only the low end, but to really make sure that the middle class can be accommodated with what's put into place. And then looking at transportation, um, a lot of discussion, and this was before Sandag had come in and done their presentation, but really trying to think about how can the city be looking holistically at overall experience. So what does Sandag have that they can bring to the table in terms of transportation solutions? What does the climate action plan require? And how does green space and the use of green space really work into the overall um, uh, design and what's put Put in from a planning perspective. So again, this was a group, a wide variety of business owners really talking about experience. We did ask the question, um, do we need meeting space down here? Do we need hotels down here? And that wasn't where this group focused in on. They feel that there's a lot of that already that exists. So instead really create um, a space that works for workers and for residents and make sure that it's programmed well so it draws visitors and make sure that the arts are woven robustly throughout the experience. So that is uh, the working group. And I will say that they were very enthusiastic and really appreciate having the opportunity to give their thoughts and their insights into this process. So thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Chris, do we have public comment on this report? Yes, we have two speakers, Chuck Kaminsky. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I see a lot of uh, similarities between uh, the first presentations in terms of bold vision. Uh, a couple of points. Um, I really appreciate the outward versus inward uh, direction. Uh, you know, when I think of New York, I think of Rockefeller Center, which is very enclosed, but still very accommodating to a wide variety of people. Um, one aspect that I think needs to be looked at is the generational aspect. Um, we are all coming, uh, pretty much everybody on the committee and, and probably the public are all coming from a certain age group, certain generation. And since this civic, what I'm gonna call a civic campus 
will exist for at least 50 more years before the next group comes in and decides to tear it down? What, what is the generation of the 20s and 30s thinking right now? Do they need the jumbotrons like in the hum Hunger Games? What will cause them to really embrace this civic campus that, uh, that you all are thinking about? So those are my comments on this one. Thank you. Check. Um, go ahead. I want I want to second the committee's uh, suggestion that you take a look at, at another design failure uh, downtown, which was uh, which was Horton Plaza. Uh, Max Schmidt and uh, dreamed up Horton Plaza. It was a very good concept, the idea of Italian hill town. Uh, but it was also designed in such a way as to be a fortress. You literally couldn't get into the place after dark. It all the doors shut. The uh, the parking garage was so brutal again, another term, that they ended up building apartments to cover it. Uh, and then let's go forward a little bit in time to our latest failure, which is Horton Plaza Park expansion of the park, not Horton Plaza, that's gorgeous and we need to keep it and not touch it, just restore it again. But the, the hard concrete uh, plaza that we built, uh, that process, the design process was driven by consultants, a lot of public input, but the whole time you had the impression that the consultants had the design in their pocket before they started. And so you need to think about the process of design of this project. Who's going to design it? Are the people going to design it? Are the politicians going to design it? Are the always present consultants going to design it? Are the consultants going to make another hundred million dollars off this deal like they always do? Uh, think about the process. And once again, look at the history, look at what worked. I'd suggest the County Administration Center is a beautiful success. Uh, not so many on the part of the city. Take a look at what we've tried and, and, and didn't, didn't get to where we wanted to go before, figure out why, and figure out how do we maneuver around that, given the, the you, structure of the existing that. council, and get this done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Does that conclude public comments? Yes, that concludes public Great. Comments. We'll go to Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think this is just a general comment. Uh, Carrie, amazing points and so incredibly similar to the first group and to ours and to Jamie and Chris, maybe um, I wonder, I know we're working at breakneck speed here, but is there a possibility that somehow the working groups roundtables uh, now have an individual conversation with each other? Maybe we have an executive committee or where we can um, feather in some of these points uh, to either one or the other of our uh, recommendations so that we're not really repetitive but we're showing that we're together and we just have we've all been working separately is there a way that we come together even early january and just have a executive committee meeting because i think we've all got just wonderful points to bring up and anyway that's just the thought i i kind of see what you know this feedback is part of, of kind of what you're saying and what we're mm -hmm. doing today. My challenge and I, Jay and Chris and Jessica, please feel free to chime in is that this is taken and consolidated. And so we don't have repetitive things in there. So we pull the, the similar principles of each and pull it into a more cohesive document that we can review um, on the night before city council. Yeah, because there's really, I mean, we have a huge amount of participation on the subcommittees and working groups too from this right. overall group. Mm -hmm. I guess we're all a little curious about what that recommendation document is going to look like, because obviously we're bringing it all together in different ways and different formats. Um, that's a curiosity, I think, for everyone. 
It is sausage making right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Steve? So Jamie, you had originally said that uh, you were talking about doing some votes today. I don't know if that's still your intention. Um, I, I think this particular report is really well put together. I think the points are well made. It's and it's. Uh, I, I think it. If there's anything ready for a vote, I think it could. So are are you looking for votes today or not? We can vote. I just didn't want the pressure to be on to vote. If there was substantial feedback, then we could take that feedback and pull it into a, a evolved document. So in, in Betsy's case, she got a bunch of comments that she's going to take back to her group. This group doesn't seem to have a lot of uh, other comments that are specific to tourism. So I think it's your call. If, in fact, you do want to vote, I would certainly move for acceptance of this. I think it's well done. But um, it's up to you as to what you want to do. I think this one is is baked for today. So if you're trying to get- I'm happy to take a motion. Okay, well, I'll make the motion. We'll see what happens then. I would move- Sounds good. Acceptance of, of attachment B, tourism roundtable report. Is there a second, Jennifer? Great, thank you. Um, Jack McGroy? Yeah, I think I think we were all, we've all agreed that we wanna think bold and, and make sure there's a really you know progressive plan for the redevelopment of this really bad, that this property is in bad shape. Uh, but then all of a sudden Hassan shows up with Gordon Carrier and they, 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 they take bold and multiply it times five. And the question is, it, it seems their plan needs more than just, you know, it, it, their plan's kind of buried in the last bullet on in Carrier's report. And I just think it ought to be highlighted more. And I'm not sure, Jay, how you guys are gonna handle that. I mean, it's a regional plan. It seems like they've run out of options, and this is one of the last options they have for a mobility, um, mobility center. And I'm not sure where you, where the mayor and the council are on that, but it, somehow that's going to be factored in because they're pretty serious about the amount of time and money they spent in looking at this site. Well, and I, I think I maybe commented at the last meeting. Um, you know, we're we're not going to slow this process down to wait to see if the Central Mobility Hub is a real project. And of course, it's gonna take 2024 and a vote to see if they can generate you know, the sales tax to make this a real project or at least a much more viable project. Because without that, the Central Mobility Hub, according to my conversations with Hassan, will not move forward. So, you know, perhaps how that gets incorporated is, is more so if the timing works, it is clearly something I think the city would would consider. Um, and I think the timing could work, i.e. by time we go through the NOA process, we make the selection, we start our negotiation. I'm in a Zoom meeting. With, with, with the team. Um, We'll probably be into 2024 and have a good sense whether or not it it passes. All we can do is within the NOA process is at least highlight that this is a possibility. So anybody who's proposing on it would at least have that on their radar. Yeah, I think as long as we keep it out there as an option for the for them. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And I I meant to mention earlier, Colleen Fitzsimons has joined us. I neglected to call her for a role earlier. So hi, Colleen, my apologies. She's been here since the beginning. Um, Mark Cafferty. Thanks, Jamie, can you hear me okay? Yes, I just, in relation to, um, first of all, I, I appreciated all the committee reports in relation to the question about voting on things today. I, I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around <laughs> just how much is gonna get pushed back at you. I mean, essentially everything that we have, that people have provided updates on has essentially said, in a lot of ways, and I say this very respectfully, everything that a great city should have, we should think about and have in this place. Um, so whether that has been good jobs or workforce housing or affordable housing or open space or innovative space or a, a world-class you know, city, city hall, all of it. And I know that, I know that people do wanna think big and bold, 
Um, I just am afraid that what's going to come back from the recommendations to you, Jamie, is everything imaginable that that we should think about from a public transit hub to um, to retail to to you name it. And I'm just trying to think of the process that that you then are going to have to go through, or we're going to have to go through to bring that down to what are appropriate priorities to bring forward to council members so they can think about it. I don't think anybody could disagree with a whole lot of what's been presented. The arts are important. The theater would be important. Um, transit is critical to a, to a city. Um, beauty and, 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 and um, activation downtown is so critical. So I always have a great deal of faith in anything Betsy Brennan recommends. I would vote on it in a second. I just don't know how much of that then coming back to you is gonna result in a massive amount of stuff that I don't know if it becomes um, too challenging or, or even impossible to prioritize. So that's all that I just share as we try to get into the, what is the voting and, and, and endorsing all of this mean coming back to you all at the city. I understand and hear what you're saying. I think we've come a long way from where we started though and the committees and working groups put in a ton of work and I know this, in particularly today seems like a lot. I agree with you, but again, we want to see if we're growing in the same direction, get the city council feedback, which I think can further direct us and narrow it. And, and I don't know that the report has to be everything. Maybe, you know, when we get to the final, it's, it's a kind of a, a clear set of directives, but we still have, I don't know if you call it an appendix or or something that is like an attachment, um, an empowered attachment that kind of has all of those um, things to be considered as part of um, you know, the developer's consideration, if that makes sense. That's kind of where I'm going with it in my head. Um, but for today's purposes, you know, we want either feedback to the groups or, hey, these principles sound good. We'll figure out how to get those more cohesive in that future document. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on this one. I'm gonna go ahead, I understand, Chris, I need to call the roll for Brown Act. I can't just do a yay. <laughs> yeah, we have to do- um, All right, uh, everybody get ready then, because I'm gonna try to go quickly. Um, Jamie Bradford is an I. Lori Black. An I. Bridget Brashear is, Absent. Betsy Brennan. Aye. Mark Cafferty. Aye. Julie Coker is absent. I don't know that Carrie can vote on her behalf, but considering it's their report, I think we're good. Um, Julie Corrales. Steve Cushman. Aye. Colleen Fitzsimons. Aye. Denise Garcia. Aye. Martha Gilmer. Aye. Alan Jen is absent. Joel Hermosillo. Aye. Donna Jones. Aye. Jennifer Luce. Aye. Jack McGroy. Is that an aye, Jack? <laughs> aye. Thank you. Mark Nelson. Aye. Bill Ponder. Aye. Stephen Russell is absent. Dr. Ricky Shabazz. Aye. Tony Young is absent. Mike Zuquette. Aye. Thank you. Moving on to Steve Cushman's group. I think that's amazing. We actually all agreed on something. I mean, let's pat ourselves on the back for a second that we actually all agreed on something. And, you know, we'll see where we go from here. All right. Economic development, um, Mark Cafferty, to your exact point, um, to your exact point, the reason that we started out with goals of task force in our report was we believe that we have to decide what is our main goal in life coming out of this task force. Our committee, subcommittee, believes our primary goal should be building a new city administration building. That doesn't mean everything else isn't vitally important. And you'll notice we said secondary goal is housing and we said affordable and workforce. So we've kind of set the table, if you will. And, and Jennifer's group is talking about what all of this should look like. 
and I just asked Christopher prior to this meeting today, in the appendix to our report, will all the things that Jennifer showed us be there? And Christopher said, yes, they will. So I think we have to live with what is the specificity of what we're after and how that's all going to happen will follow. So we tried to do, Mark, exactly what you were suggesting, is put right up front, this is what our number one goal is. Not that we weren't all impressed with Hassan, but that's a four to $5 billion project that may or may not happen. We should note it, we should talk about it, we're certainly supportive of it. But as Jay said, we don't want it to slow down the process to finally, after all these years, focus on a city hall. Um, we, we've said the building should be five to 600,000 feet. We've said that, um, that the new cab should be paid for through a combination of revenue generated by the NOA and existing city revenues, which means bonding. A singular NOA should be used for the five blocks. Um, Betsy, as she said in her group, they, the, we talked about that, five versus six. That's because uh, in five, you will see we're proposing a fee developer, which means that the building would actually happen. We could start on it tomorrow because the city's going to own it. The city is going to create its own revenue. So we do not have to do an NOA. We feel if you, if you burden it with an NOA, we'll be talking about it for the next five years. And we'd like to see something come out of this. That's why we separated it out. We believe an outside consultant should be hired to advise the mayor and the city um, how all this should go forward. Uh, to all our labor friends that were on earlier, but I don't think are on today, we've said the renovation of the Civic Theater uh, could be a development condition of the NOA, but it should be in collaboration with the San Diego Theaters and their board and local philanthropists. We're hoping it will be funded by them and the philanthropists not put on as a contingency that would slow down, number one. We've also said the JLL report should, uh, uh, should be looked at uh, as, as public facing services and what services are appropriate for downtown. We feel the timeliness of the report is really important, not 18 months from today, as some reporters have said, but that it should be uh, straight away. Um, we did receive, uh, all of us, an in-depth report uh, on, on the NOA and what Surplus Land Act means. And we've given you uh, our provisions for workforce housing, the type of housing, and what our preference is. Uh, so that's, that's where we are as a committee. Uh, we're looking forward to, to January 10, when this goes before the city council, looking for their input, and then all of us, and each of our committees at that time are going to have to go back and listen to what the policymakers have said to us. They may like this. They may totally disagree with it. We'll then come up with what our recommendations are. But as of this moment in time, this is where we are, and this is what we would like to see go forward. So I'm happy to answer any questions public or committee has. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you, Steve. Chris, is there public comment on this? report. Yes, we have Chuck Thank you. I think there's a, a lot of uh, excellent details in this report. The one that um, um, I hedge about is the um, what I appear what appears to be the uh, recommendation to build on the Cobb uh, building uh, site first. Uh, maybe I'm premature, but I'm trying to uh, put my hands and my mind around how then would a CAB, a, a city administration building, assuming that maybe there's a city hall there, how that would integrate with the remaining blocks. And maybe that's more of a design issue. And maybe it's a preferred um, location. And as the city moves forward, maybe that is considered uh, as the development or design teams kind of play with that. It, it may not be the best location if it can't be integrated into the rest of the blocks. Uh, maybe that's something that Jennifer Luce's group can talk about as they meet again. That's my, that's my concern there. Thank you. Oh, wait, one more. One more is that 
I think the, uh, the thrust to do what are the givens uh, by this committee and what are the non-negotiables should also be part of uh, an ultimate presentation. Uh, in other words, feed down into that these are the, the requirements that we would expect and then let the city deal with that as, as they take it on under the council and the mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Does that conclude public comment? No, we also have Don. Don, go ahead. Yeah, um, I hear Steve wanting to build something quick. Um, I worked downtown for several decades. I worked in that building at 101 Ash that nobody wants to talk about anymore. I liked it when I worked there. I walked through the county administration center complex every day on my way to work. And I looked at that big parking lot just east of 101 Ash Street and thought, well, there's a high rise building waiting to be built. Why is it still a parking lot? And so I want to endorse Jack's position which is if you're gonna buy any of these additional blocks, buy them now, buy them cheap. If you wait, if you put them into a second phase, they're gonna already, the value on them will already gone through the roof because everybody knows you want it. So buy it now. Uh, I don't know what you do with the California bank building. I don't think anybody's trying to get rid of it, but uh, certainly that block to the east of this 101 Ash Street should be considered. And Steve, you can start building something there tomorrow. Thank you, Don. That concludes public comment. We have any committee comments or questions or a motion? For the sake of discussion, I'm happy to move acceptance uh, of this report, uh, realizing that this is where we are today. This may not be where we are after the city council, but I think at this point, we've got a good uh, document to go forward. So I would move acceptance. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Mark. Um, go ahead, Mark. Oh, you can now I just put my hand up to second. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Jack, was that a second or did you want to talk? I'm mute. Okay, good. Um, can you put up the recommendations one more time? There's one change, Steve, I'd like to make. If you go to number Ooh. Okay, number three, one of the big sources of revenue is going to be freed up revenue from the office space we're currently leasing downtown that can then be redeployed into debt service. And I think we ought to actually call that out so the city council uh, sees that. How would you rewrite it, Jack? You're just Combination of revenue generated by, by NOA, comma, uh, Existing revenue gen revenues, revenue yeah. generated from freed up office leases currently in place, and existing city revenues. You get that, Chris? Could you repeat the second one, Jack? Rev com uh, after NOA, a comma. Yeah. Revenue right. generated from freed up city office space leases, which is a big number. And existing city revenues. And existing city revenue, Jim. Yeah, that's fine. Steve and Mark, Mark, you're good with that too? Yeah. Mark Nelson, yep. great, yep. thank you. You may want to also add then uh, any other savings. Savings being that if we've got operating expenses here yeah. that we're throwing into this building because of its age and condition, Maybe something called uh, deferred maintenance or something. Yeah. And deferred maintenance. Okay. Well, not deferred. I think we can. I think we can. Spending any money on it. But, yeah, just maybe any other ancillary savings that may accrue from the uh, the new construction of a new building and the expiration of the leases. 
don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think we get the general idea and can we'll clean it, it up. as it comes back. Yeah, we'll clean it up. Um, are there any questions or comments on this one? I can't really see everybody with there we go. Has his Mike. Hand up, Amy. Go ahead, Mike. Um thank you, Steve. And um I I support this having helped work on it. And thank you, Jack and Tony, for all your work. Um, everybody won't be surprised to hear that Steve uh, took the lead on it and did a lot of work. So thank you, Steve. I guess I just wanted to acknowledge um, Chuck's point about the placement of City Hall. Um, we, we think it's important to, as Steve articulated, you know, take the City Hall parcel out of the NOA, because if you don't, then that parcel will have all the same state eyeballs on it that the others will when in fact all we're trying to do is build a dedicated city hall on that parcel and i think that makes sense and i support it but i would acknowledge what chuck is saying which is well but what if that's not the best location for any number of reasons um, for the city hall and i think that's something that might need to be finessed a little um um, when the time comes, because by doing it, we're not trying to predetermine that it has to be on the Cobb site, although we think it makes the most sense because that's the most decrepit building that needs to go first and go away as soon as possible, should have gone away 30 years ago, um, and makes sense for, uh, it will probably help with continuity of operations during construction, et cetera, et cetera. So we think there's good reasons for that, but I just wanted to acknowledge that I think Chuck makes a good point that we need to finesse, you know, if that's the right spot uh, for other considerations. But you sort of have to make a, you sort of have to make a call if you're going to take it out of the NOA. It's either in the NOA or in or not, and maybe there's a way to finesse that. But I, I just wanted to sort of say that stuff out loud. That doesn't change uh, my support for this, but just wanted to acknowledge it. Yeah, and I think our committee was really focused on the short-term immediate need, which is. We need a new city hall. I mean, we're we've got an embarrassment down there now, but I think Jennifer's group, I'm sure, is going to hammer on the bigger vision for the site. But the first thing we need to do is get that city hall built wherever it's most appropriately uh, built. And the Cobb site seemed easy because you could just demolish Cobb, keep Cab in existence until the new building was built, and then move the employees over into 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 the new Cab on the Cobb site. I mean, that was the easiest. Um, most fun, practical thing to do but I think it all has to blend in with what is our overarching vision for the site um, recognizing we've got an immediate short-term need and let's remember that what we're trying to do is get the mayor and council to focus on getting the city admin building done and if if Cobb isn't the right site they'll not go with Cobb so we're just trying to get them focused hey guys ladies pick a site and let's go. And that's what Mike Zuckett just said. If if they find out for whatever reason it's the wrong site, okay, they're not going to do it. We just want them to focus on a site. They may decide we picked the wrong site, and that's okay with us. We just want them to focus and get going on that project instead of spending the next five to 10 years talking about it again. It's an urgent <laughs> need, and we, we it's an urgent need. We screwed it up for 30 years, and it's time to make it right. Mark has a question, Jamie. I am um, I, more than anything. I just wanted to um, say I appreciated what Mike just said, and I appreciated what Steve added after. I think the, I think the the need to make strong recommendations so that there is action that people can actually look at and react to is critical. I think saying on the record as we represent lots of different constituencies that obviously everyone on the screen wants to think critically about, you know, if those recommendations are in fact the right place or if there's something better. But I think the way that Mike phrased that, you know, to me is something that I think is really important to state for the record. It makes it an even stronger recommendation in my, in my mind. Thank you. We have a motion by Steve Cushman, a second by Mark Nelson. I'll call the roll. Um, Jamie Bradford is an aye. Lori Black. Aye, and thank you, everybody. Good work. Bridget Brashear is absent. Betsy Brennan. Aye. Mark Cafferty. Aye. 
Julie Coker is absent. Julie Corrales is absent. Steve Cushman. Aye. Colleen Fitzsimons. Aye. Denise Garcia. <clears throat> Denise. Aye. Martha Gilmer. Aye. Alan Jin is absent. Joel Hermosillo. Aye. Donna Jones. Aye. Jennifer Luce. Aye. Jack McGrory. Aye. Mark Nelson. Aye. Bill Ponder. Aye. Stephen Russell is absent. Dr. Ricky Shabazz. Aye. Tony Young is absent. Mike Zuckett. Aye. And we'll now move to Jennifer Luce's committee. Okay. Um, thanks everyone. Such an honor to be a part of this. We are the Civic Center Revitalization Committee Design Roundtable. And um, we've had really incredible meetings together. Um, I, I wish they could go on and on because the discussions get richer and richer <clears throat> by, the, by the minute. Uh, we've come up with a manifesto of 13 recommendations. <laughs> so it's gonna be a little lengthy for me to read this. Um, and we're hoping that maybe you can tell us if we're missing something. Uh, we are thinking about design in the broadest sense of the term, as opposed to the aesthetic sense of the term. It's design of community, it's design of civicness, it's design um, in every aspect of our lives. I'd say we are 97, no, 95% baked on this document. We really want a little bit more time to um, delve into a few more points. Um, we also really feel as a group that we ought to, as a committee, the larger committee, have a meeting with the mayor. He assigned us, we'd like to have a workshop with him where we really sit down and passionately describe these beliefs that we all have. We also think that even now there should be more of the public invited the additional public comment today has been super helpful. And if we can get more public um, to attend and comment in the next two meetings, it would be fantastic. And we had a plan to sign our document personally with signatures, calling us, uh, calling this a declaration of civicness. And we would encourage everybody to sign the final document personally. So we as citizens of San Diego um, are clear that we are really committed to these recommendations. So let me start uh, with our preface to our manifesto. Uh, and then I'm gonna ask each of the authors of our points if they wouldn't mind um, describing them or reading them. Our city is poised to embark on a once in a lifetime transformation of the downtown civic center, giving us the proud heart and soul that we all deserve a welcoming place of pride and dignity that will serve our next generations long into the future. A new city hall will be the cornerstone of a five block redevelopment for living and working. The time is now to carefully shape our goals and aspirations to create a remarkable place. And it's time to commit to those goals. Now is also the time for huge, audacious thinking, broad outreach, strong partnerships, and a thoughtful planning to guarantee success. Now means it's time to remember how greatness is achieved. It's difficult and it's expensive and it takes commitment from all of us. It's time to show once again why we are a great city. Mayor Gloria has assembled a committee of San Diegans who are dedicated, have dedicated their careers to improving the lives of all who call themselves San Diegans. The group brings together people who can guide the vision for what this place can be. People who know how to pay for it and people who know how to take care of it forever. So the manifesto um, begins with A. And Lillian, would you read this one? Can Lillian read this one? Okay, all right, uh, A celebrate democracy. And we go from the general to the specific through this list. And we're hoping it's the right order, but we're working on that. Celebrate democracy. Our new civic center must provide a place for future, future generations of diverse San Diego citizens 
to actively engage in and protect our democratic system. Many ways that that could happen. B, build trust. The reimagined Civic Center must nurture and strengthen the trust and partnership. And Carol, this is yours. Do you want to read this one? I'm sorry, Carol. Is Carol here? I think just the committee is on as panelists, the actual okay. appointed committee. All right. Okay, got it. Build trust. The reimagined Civic Center must nurture and strengthen the trust and partnership between those who govern and those who those who are governed and those who govern, which is critically critical to a flourishing society. The design build process must embrace the public first, welcome the diversity of our citizens, nurture healthy public discourse, engender civic pride, and facilitate a shared ownership in the outcome of public decisions. Honor public service. I don't think Stephen's here, so I'll read his. A city hall represents the noble commitment of thousands of public employees who dedicate their lives to public service. The offices, meeting rooms, break spaces, public spaces, and surrounding areas must dignify and inspire these workers and the members of the public who, who engage with government. Healthy environments cre create, created with appropriate design principles bring out the best in each of our city staff members and honors the public that we serve. Take risks. This is Marty Poirier. I'll read for him. Bold civic leadership is essential to any large scale development success. Aspirations must be clearly articulated. Excellence takes time, dedication, and a commitment to bravery. Create dynamic municipal synergies. Lori, do you want to read this one? Sure. A civic heart, both physical and emotional, is most powerful when it is accessible, connected to urban transportation systems, housing, employment, schools, and cultural institutions, thus facilitating engagement in private and public initiatives. A collaboration with all leadership in these systems must be initiated hand in hand with the developers RFPs exponentially successful projects like Petco Park speak to the power of such collaboration. And F is Martha. Embrace arts and culture, <clears throat> given its geographical position in the very center of our city. The new civic center must integrate arts and culture into its site design. Arts and culture drive economic development in our largest, most international cities a crucial element in attracting a dynamic workforce and generating jobs and revenues. Arts and culture play a crucial role in advancing social development, including a feeling of belonging, fostering full engagement with our communities and addressing the trauma we have experienced with COVID-19, racial injustice, homelessness, intolerance, and a widening gap of shared understanding. Great, Martha, thank you. G is Bill. Shift paradigms. The new Civic Center must embrace an inclusive, future-forward global view to expand our cultural influence and impact. This shift changes all aspects of revitalization, housing, civic engagement, rebuilding of civic institutions, city hall, working spaces, public gathering, and how our leaders inspire regional binational community. Thanks. This one, we're still working on it, uh, the transportation element, which we feel really passionate about, but let's start with this. Center the network. Our city is growing at a rapid pace. The Civic Center must be accessible to all and become a hub for transportation to the border, to the airport, and to the entirety of San Diego County. A transportation initiative ought to be at the core of the Civic Center redevelopment a collaboration with Sandeg must be initiated hand in hand with the developers RFPs. Successful ex examples of such projects, Moynihan Station, Hudson Yard, World Trade, and Grand Central Station in New York. Lori, I yeah. Listen, and I really feel strong about this. <laughs> Listen, 
Invest in community outreach. Effective community engagement leads to positive outcomes for residents, the private sector, and government alike. Expand opportunities for virtual participation and create a schedule of properly noticed in-person workshops throughout all of San Diego City neighborhoods so more residents can participate. The city and its developer design team must engage the people of San Diego in discussion to inform us how civic spaces will benefit community and represent our benefits and aspirations. Trust all citizens to be articulate and care, clear, excuse me. Note the powerful dialogue that resulted in a visionary ballpark in our East Village neighborhood, one that came to fruition through in community engagement. And Lori's actually composed a draft questionnaire that we'll add as an addendum to our uh, report. Uh, Stephen wrote this one, build diverse housing. We must positively impact the region's housing shortage crisis through creative thinking and proper design. Housing must be located appropriately to provide for the health and wellness of its residents. This project must consider local and regional plans to maximize opportunities for housing in the immediate site and surrounding downtown area. The Civic Center project must consider multiple housing types in its planning, including extremely low income, low income, moderate income, missing middle housing. Different typologies should be explored, including co-living and micro units, SROs and family units. No single site can respond to all of the housing needs of our times. Creative partnerships must provide a model for how we can think about housing development in our city as a whole. The next one is Marty Poirier, and I'll read that one. Commit to climate action. And I think it was Chuck who mentioned this. Uh, and you know, we can expand on this if, if we feel that we should, but here we go. Commit to climate action. The new civic center develop, redevelopment must implement proven sustainability initiatives. Our city's future, our children's future, our planet's future depends on this commitment from civic leadership. The next one is Bill. Save space by design. Through public design strategies, such as crime prevention through environmental design, SEPTED, the Civic Center core must create safe, inspiring, well-lighted, visually focused public spaces and places. And finally, demand design excellence. The buildings and outdoor spaces of the new Civic Center must be exceptionally well-designed, emphasizing a seamless aesthetic integration with the surrounding downtown neighborhood. The selected development teams must demonstrate a proven track record for design excellence of this scale in ideas and delivery beyond construction. To earn an honored place in history, every aspect of design must celebrate our unique San Diego personality and climate. The Civic Center must be an authentic expression of ourselves and our place. Looks, look to successful projects and see the design appendix for aesthetic aspirations. So we have also adjusted that appendix to be more uh, in, in line with many of these points. So in, in conclusion, in the spirit of great civic endeavors of San Diego's past, we are inspired by the visionary tenacity of the civic leaders who built Balboa Park and the Panama Exposition of 1915. Our new civic center must epitomize San Diego as a city of science, the arts, audacious courage, and binational regional cooperation. Our recommendation is more than what a project looks like or one that states which buildings to tear down, which to keep, and how to fit all the necessary programming into the site. That will happen. We have one chance in this case to get this right, a legacy project that is an opportunity to level up the city's economic, aesthetic, and societal value. Our leaders must engage the community and think big to develop an innovative civic center that will serve our city now 
and for our future. Thank you, Jennifer. Chris, do we have public comment on this item? Yes, we have Chuck Kaminsky. Chuck, go ahead. Uh, God, it's hard to comment after that uh, manifesto of uh, fabulous design uh, comments. I appreciate Jennifer and her team for writing that. It's very, it's very remarkable that as I saw this for the first time today, I don't think it was on Christopher's email from Friday. So it's a lot to absorb right now, um, but it truly is a live work play area. Um, uh, just a couple of things. I think as your group goes back, perhaps uh, thinking, uh, and since others have mentioned the Sandag uh, Transportation Hub, one way to approach a future design is to kind of have a placeholder, a potential placeholder in any kind of design development for a hub. Uh, it may be a lot more complicated uh, than I'm making it. Uh, no, it probably is, because if they're talking about underground subways, trains, et cetera, that will have an impact on any kind of uh, development there. Uh, another point is, I think, that this location should be a um, cooking pot for job creation, that whoever is a tenant or a building should, uh, sh we, we should strive to create the widest variety of jobs that uh, these uh, developments may have. And I don't mean in construction, I mean in actual day-to-day -day, uh, day -day workforce. Um, and I, I appreciate the workforce housing and the family housing. Uh, it may be entirely possible that the, the um, city staff that works in the cab uh, may have the ability to live in some of the housing there. So therefore you're integrating live, work and play all at once. Um, those are the points. I think it's a remarkable manifesto. I just need to absorb it. So thank Jennifer and her mm -hmm. team. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. And that concludes public comment. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to Colleen with Simons first. Thank you. I had a question about where sustainability and some of our more climate related goals fit in. And um, some of the comments we had earlier in the open public comment section about skilled and trained workforce working on the project. And I don't know where that fits into our overall vision for this project, but I would like to bring that up for discussion. Yeah, I think sustainability goes beyond um, what we understand to be building processes that make a site more um, climate friendly, but you know, you could even go to the transportation hub as being an incredibly sustainable idea in the sense that um, we can build all this housing and bring people to work, but if we can't transport them, we're in trouble. And if we force them to have cars and need to park them, that's an issue. So uh, it's even in the programming of what, what is on the site that becomes a sustainability initiative. So I think what's interesting about what you're saying is I think we need to broaden that statement. Yeah, I mean, I think program definitely can help us get there with sustainability, but we also need to be super explicit if we want to use this as an example of what the city can do to meet its climate action plan goals, to be a leader in this area, as we, we always state that we want to do. But if we're not explicit in the NOA, then it's not going to happen. And so mm -hmm. um, I would like to see some uh, less lofty goals and more explicit uh, goals. To be could, could you maybe help us to edit um, number K and make it broader and more specific? Sure, I would be yeah. happy to. Um, I gave you my card at our last in-person meeting. If you don't have my contact information, I can um, um, get, the, get that. Chris can connect you too, right, Chris? Thank you. Yeah. Jeff? Great. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, this is the, um, Jennifer and your committee, all the people who worked on this, this, this I would have loved to have this document as city manager. I mean, 
just to jam it through the council and make things happen. I mean, I think it's a great set of principles. I think a lot, I think it should be the leading document in the report. And then like Steve, our committee was much more specific, but it follows in with the recommendations that Jennifer made. And I think each of the other committees makes more specific recommendations following up on Jennifer's um, principles, because I just think they're, it's an amazing set of principles for our city. And if we can just follow those principles and use the steps that we've all articulated in our other committees, um, we've got a real shot at making this happen. Thank you, Jeff. Dr. Ricky Shabazz. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was trying to figure out the most politically correct way for me to say what I'm going to say, but I, I haven't figured out one. I thought the document started off very uh, great. Uh, I would respectfully ask that uh, any reference to Balboa Park and the Panama exhibit either be stricken from the document or that a reference be made uh, that the Kumeyaay Nation were the original inhabitants of that region. For those who are not aware uh, that Balboa Park when it was built that the Kumeyaay Nation were stripped from their land, some of them killed. Uh, and, and I'm just not comfortable with that reference unless there's a reference uh, to the Kumeyaay. Uh, and I would ask for some kind of consideration in the de redevelopment of this center to reference the Kumeyaay. Great, thank you so much. Duly thank noted. You. Jennifer, are you not looking for a vote today? You said you wanted to go back. I think we're look, looking for a vote of uh, and anyone who's on the in our group. With, what do we all think? I think we're looking for a vote on positive direction and allowing us to refine language. For instance, okay. the language about Balboa Park. Mark Cafferty. Yeah, I was just raising my hand to say that I would make a motion um, with what Jennifer just added. I think with great respect for what um, with what Ricky just shared. I also think with, with um, significant respect for what Colleen shared. I don't know it's entirely that it was entirely your group's responsibility, Jennifer, to factor in um, stronger workforce. You know, kind of. Um, goals and dialogue mm -hmm. to all this. I think that that's all of our job. That's the job of a lot of committees. Um, okay. So I think that that's something that we've got to think real critically about. We There's lots of opportunities that can get missed with big efforts in cities. Probably in my mind, the one that gets missed most often is ways to connect individuals who historically haven't been connected to that economic and workforce opportunity to that economic and workforce mm -hmm. opportunity. So I think there's some amazing language in what Jennifer wrote um, to Jack's point to guide an awful lot of what we should be doing uh, and focusing on. And I just would say, I would make a motion to approve um, that in the frame of what Jennifer just asked for with um, the notes that that Ricky and, and Colleen shared. Um, I have a motion from Mark Cafferty. Is there a second? Second, second from it. Lori Black. Uh, Mark uh, Nelson. Yeah, I was going to you, second, but, but I'm happy that Lori did. I'd only add that my support of, I'm, I'm a participant of this, this working group and uh, it was a, a pleasure to, to participate. I'd only add that Mark, is, is, as long as your motion, I take it embraces uh, all the comments and this is kind of a directional support rather than maybe specific word by word report, then that's, um, then I support it. Thank you. That's how I understood it. Lori? Yeah, just very briefly, I, I wanted to say, as I read through all of these, um, I think it's very important for us to acknowledge that we're all on the same page in a lot of ways, and that's really important. And I think that's going to be very important for the city council and for the mayor to understand that, you know, we're 20 plus individuals. We got together. Everybody's worked very hard. I know how these things are and has contributed. But what's really remarkable amongst all these leaders as I'm looking at all of you is we all came from different possibilities to really what we're looking for. And some of you got very specific. And I just wanna say thank you. I hope they understand 
how hard everybody worked and will continue to work because I know we have to refine it with, with Jennifer Luce, but I, I thank you all because um, it's really wonderful to be able to collaborate and truly put egos in the closet to come up with something that could really be great. And I just wanna thank you all, that's it. I'm feeling gratitude today. Back at you, Lori. <laughs> All right, we have a motion by Mark Cafferty and a second by Lori Black. Uh, and I'll call the roll. Jamie Bradford is an aye. Lori Black. Aye. Bridget Brashear is absent. Betsy Brennan. Aye. Mark Cafferty. Aye. aye. Julie Coker is absent. Julie Corrales is absent. Steve Cushman. Did we lose Steve? Steve. All right, Steve Cushman is an aye. Colleen Fitzsimons. Aye. Denise Garcia. Aye. Martha Gilmer. Aye. Alan Jin is absent. Joel Hermosillo. Aye. Donna Jones. Aye. Jennifer Luce. Aye. Jack McGrory. Aye. Mark Nelson. Aye. Bill Ponder. I see you, Bill. Yep, aye. Stephen Russell is absent. Dr. Ricky Shabazz. Aye. Tony Young is absent. Mike Zuckett. Aye. And um, thank you all for that. I just as a, since I'm the chair, I'm, I'm gonna go back and see if we can do something similar for the downtown partnerships recommendations. And so they're not the outlier of not having our support. I think we were all kind of rowing in that direction and would ask if there's a motion um, for downtown partnerships recommendations. Jamie, I would always say I want, I'd like to see a little more balance between um, downtown employment core and customer service in the outlying areas. I think, um, I think, and I know Betsy's taking that back to her group and I think, um, you know, similar to the comments that came back to Jennifer, I think we take those, but give the group that, that positive feedback that what generally they're recommending is supported by the group. It's good. These are conceptual approvals subject to more review. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mark is Mark Nelson. Is that a motion? Yeah, that's a motion consistent with Jack's uh, input. Is there a second? <clears throat> That a second, Mark Cafferty? Yes, I'd, I'll second with exactly what Mark Nelson just said. Perfect, thank you all very much. Um, I will call the roll. I am an, uh, Jamie Bradford is an aye. Lori Black. An aye. Bridget Brashear is absent. Betsy Brennan. Aye. Mark Cafferty. Still aye. Julie Coker is absent. Julie Corrales is absent. Steve Cushman. Aye. Colleen Fitzsimons. Aye. Denise Garcia. Aye. Martha Gilmer. Did we lose Martha? I yes. don't see her any longer. Alan Jin is absent. Joel Hermosillo. Aye. Donna Jones. Aye. Jennifer Luce. Aye. Jack McGrory. Aye. Mark Nelson. Aye. Bill Ponder. Aye. Stephen Russell is absent. Dr. Ricky Shabazz. Aye. Tony Young is absent. Mike Zuckett. Aye. Thank you all very much for that. Um, I'm sure Betsy appreciates that. Um, we will now move to item two, which is um, consideration of adding two dates to January for us to meet. Chris, did you want to make comments on this? Yeah, very, very briefly, um, this is simply just a proposal so that we can meet on January 9th and the 23rd. Um, in our first meeting, we decided that we would um, meet up until December 12th. Um, we would need to vote again to extend to, to, to those additional two meetings. Um, for your consideration as well, we'll be given that, that city council information update on January 10th. Um, so that'll be the day after we meet again on January 9th, should we vote to approve this. Um, 
And also wanted to clarify that there will be no meeting on December 26th. And a couple of you have reached out with, with that question. So we will not meet on December 26th. And if we go to approve this, our next meeting um, will be January 9th. And that's all. Thank you, Chris. Is there public comment on this item? But that might be from the previous item. Don, do you have um, public comment on this item? Yes, uh, the one thing on this last report that that confused me, I think everyone agrees that the neighborhood around the existing city hall is not what we'd like downtown to look like. Uh, C Street corridor is not something people get excited about. 101 Ash Street is about to come down. We have language in that manifesto that says the new civic center compound should fit in with the surrounding buildings. And it just seems to me like there should be language in there that says the new compound should be filled with buildings that other people will want to replicate downtown and around the world. That the buildings that get built in this compound should be a precedent should be something that people in other cities who are thinking about doing their own city halls will say, I want that. So that's my thought, that just that one tweak and I think the rest of the manifesto is quite fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Don. Uh, there is no further public comment. Thank you. Is there any committee comment or a motion? I move approval of the uh, dates as presented. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, you Betsy. Do you need a motion for dates? Why would you need a motion? You just set them. I'm looking to Jay and Chris on this. We're just confirming that we're meeting both the 9th and the 23rd. And yeah. that's. You don't need a motion. I'd probably agree. Okay. Why don't we posted. just see? They'll, they'll get posted can, ultimately. Yeah, per, per the city attorney, we just have to vote on this. I, I know, similar to the first meeting when we decided to meet bi-weekly. We've already got the motion. We might as well vote on it. Yeah, do it, get it over with. All right, Jamie Bradford is an aye. Lori Black. Aye. Bridget Brashear is absent. Betsy Brennan. Aye. Mark Cafferty. Aye. Julie Coker is absent. Julie Corrales is absent. Steve Cushman. Aye. Colleen Fitzsimons. Aye. Denise Garcia. Aye. Martha Gilmer. Alan Jin. Joel Hermosillo. Aye. Donna Jones. Aye. Jennifer Luce. Aye. Jack McGrory. Aye. Mark Nelson. Aye. Bill Ponder. Aye. Stephen Russell is absent. Dr. Ricky Shabazz. Aye. Tony Young is absent. Mike Zuckett. Aye. Thank you all for hanging in there. I appreciate that. Um, I have lost my notes. Is there any other committee comment before we adjourn? Seeing none, I appreciate all of your time just leading up to this on your subcommittees and working groups and really today as well and all of your attention and feedback. Thank you all very much. Have Happy holidays, be safe. Uh, we will now adjourn and our next meeting is on January 9th at 3.30. Thank you all. Thanks, Jamie.